Hello class. So this will be the last of the lectures in section 4.2. And we're going to do uh, a uh, equation that combines a sine and cosine function into one sine function. And the reason why these are important is real world applications, again, in our utility grid, uh, when we're uh, transmitting high power, we do it in a three phase system of three different sine waves that are 120 degrees out of phase. And so when you kind of sketch and graph these things, it's much easier to do when you can combine them with phase shifts, et cetera. And so this is this concept that we're going to introduce with this new uh, uh, equation uh, type of identity. And it's called the A sine of X plus B cosine of X. And so the way it works is that you actually can derive it using the addition formula for sine. And uh, I'm going to walk through this on the slide, but you're not going to be asked any questions of this on the homework. Because the way that this is set up, if you want to combine, for example, these two, if you think about how the uh, sine of x plus theta would be set up. It would be cosine of theta, sine of x, sine of theta, cosine of x. And if you got your little chart out, you know that uh, if you set uh, theta equal to 60 degrees, pi over three, you know that cosine of 60 is one half and sine of 60 is three over two. And these values here are strategically set up where they end up canceling. And so if you end up combining all that, you would see that this waveform could be simplified to sine of x plus um, pi over three. So what we've done is we've taken this concept and introduced this formula here, where if you have a sine of x and b cosine of x, you can combine it using the uh, addition formula for sines and you end up with a formula that looks like this. We call this k, as you can see down here, the sums of sines and cosines, where k is a squared plus b squared, so two values in front. What we have here is uh, how to calculate theta. Theta is calculated using one of these two. Uh, you could either do inverse cosine and get it theta or inverse sine. And remember, k is on the bottom and the a's and the b's are on the top. So I think the best thing to do is let's walk through this example here and show you how it works. So this is three sine of X plus four cosine of X. Pick some nice numbers here, right? Sine and cosine um, or three squared plus four squared is five squared, right? But it's always good to write these out. So I always like to jot these down because it's easy to make a mistake. And so what is K? The K is a square root of a squared plus b squared. So that's three squared plus four squared. And you're probably sick of this number, right? So that would be five. So how do we calculate theta? Well, when you calculate theta, let's use cosine, for example. Cosine of theta is A over square root of A squared plus B squared. So that would be 3 over, I need a little more room there, 3 over 5. So how do we do that? Well, you take the cosine inverse of both sides, all right? So these will cancel. And so theta would equal three, five divided is 0. 0.6. Inverse cosine is uh, 53.1 degrees. So here's our new waveform. Five sine of x plus 53.1 degrees. This is a thousand times easier to graph than this. 
because you have to combine the two and add and subtract. And so this is way easier. Let me refresh your memory, right? The period, two pi, phase shift, minus 53.1 degrees. And what's our amplitude? That would be five. So how do we split it up into four? It's really nice when it's degrees, right? Well, our five key points, what's 360 divided, let's say, let's use 360 divided by four is 90, right? So how do we start? We start at minus 53.1 degrees. That will give us zero. So if you add 90 to that, you would get plus, what is that, 36.9? Yeah, you would get five. Add another 90 to that, you would get 126.9. You go back to zero. Add another 90 to that, you get 216. You go to minus five. And then you add another 90 to that, you would get uh, 306.9. And you get back to where you started. And if you take where you started and add it to that, right? The difference between these two, not added to it, the difference between those two needs to be the complete period, which is 360 degrees. So if you sketch this guy here, let's say that's five and that's minus five. That's minus 53.1 degrees, right? And you go all the, all the way up to here. That would be 36.9. Come down to here. That would be 126.9. Go down to minus five. That point there would be 216.9. And when you get back up to where you started, that would be 306.9. So, when you're trying to, to, to actually graph these things, to get rid of as many of the sine functions and cosine functions and try to get to one uh, function, everything combined with phase shifts, et cetera, so much easier to deal with. So that ends uh, the recorded lectures for section 4.2. And uh, the next three sections, I think, are quite complicated. <laughs> Uh, sections four, three, four, four, and four, five. So I believe that I have that scheduled that we're only going to do one section then for the next three weeks to try to get these ideas and concepts down.